Let's see how unpivoting works in practice. Please open file attached to the lecture called Unpivot Says by Departments version 4 empty. And here in the sheet data, we've got the data that we want to unpivot. As you can see in the rows, we've got the names of the departments. In columns, we've got the name of the months. And then inside, we've got a sum of sales in millions of US dollars. We want to get from that sort of table to proper table. So have a dedicated column where we've got the name of the department, a dedicated column where we've got the month, and the last column will be dedicated to the sales. Proper data is much more flexible for conducting a lot of analysis. So let's see how we can do that. Let's go to the sheet data. We'll select the table. Let's convert it into Excel table. Now let's upload it to the Power Query editor. So we go to data in the upper menu and we pick from table range option. As you can see, we've got the table already in Power Query. Now we have to unpivot that. This option is available if you go to transform tab. And there are two ways to do that. So the first way is to select the February and January columns. So the one I want to unpivot and press unpivot columns. As you can see, we've got the table. Let's change the name of the column attribute. We'll change it into month. And there we've got the result that we want to get. Let's copy the whole query. We call it second option. We'll go back two steps. So this is the original table. And the second way to unpivot is simply to do the opposite thing. So select the home that we don't want to unpivot. In the transform tab, pick from the menu, unpivot other columns. And I get exactly the same result. Again, I have to rename the column. So in the first approach, we have selected the columns that we want to unpivot. In the second approach, we have selected the column that we don't want to unpivot. So you can use the first or the second option. And to finish off, let's load it to the Excel. So close and load to. We'll load them as um, tables. So as you can see, with both approaches, we got the proper table. Let's see whether the query works. So we'll go to data. We'll add a new product, domestic appliances. As you can see, the table has expanded. We put the values for February and January. And now let's refresh the queries. Let's go maybe to the second option. Refresh. And as you can see, it's added to the table automatically. And the same happens with the first approach if you refresh it as well. So to sum up, if the data are not in a proper table, you can use those two approaches to get the proper data. Moreover, they're dynamic. So once I add new data, the table will be refreshed and I will get the new records also unpivoted. Let's also check what would happen if we add another month. So let's go to data and we will add March. The data, since this is an Excel table, will expand. And let's put some values. Let's go to the second option, refresh. As you can see, we've got also March. And then same we go with the table, refresh. And we've got the data for the March as well. So the query also reacts not only to adding new rows, new categories of products, but also adding new months. So have a look at that and play with the data on your own. Try to repeat the things we have shown in this lecture.